by congratulating you both on this album. It's an absolutely amazing album, and I know that our listeners are going to love it because they have been loving the singles so far, so congratulations. Thank Thank you so much. Now, I guess my first question is, I was wondering if one of you could tell us a little bit about how this band came together, because you guys are from all over the world. How did you end up coming together as a band? Sure. Uh, should I do it, or, or would you like to do it? Uh, as you want. I can, I can start if you want. Mm-hmm. So, in 2017... Boris asked me to record drums for his music. We met before, like some years before, because we were playing in different bands, but we played some concerts together and we, we, we knew each other. So then at this moment, he asked me to record drums for his music. I recorded the drums. Then he asked me to, would be cool to make a project and play live and find other musicians. But at that moment, I was still playing with uh, another two bands. And then I said, you know, I, I cannot. But that happened, that changed uh, one month and a half after recording the album. And then we started to play together and we started to look for musicians. And it took a while until we found a stable Memories, yeah. yeah, but and so yeah, we can say it started in summer 2017, and we all were living here in Berlin. We are all living in Berlin, so that's how it all started. But that's also the beautiful thing, I think, yes, about this city that there are so many people from all around the world here. So um, yeah, it's very. Um, very easy to imagine that uh, the band would consist from completely different people from any parts of the world. Yeah. Boris, it sounds like you were putting the music together at the start. Was your ambition always to one day form a band or were what were your plans with the music that you were writing? Yeah, um, at that moment, um, it, the situation was that I... Uh, uh, quit one band, like one band uh, disbanded, and I was still playing in another one, which I was also about to leave soon, uh, because I wanted to change the musical style. It was like a punk band where I was playing before, uh, and I wanted to do something a bit different. Um, it kind of was a co- coincidence in a way. A friend of mine asked me if, uh, uh, if I want to record uh, my songs at his studio, I showed him a few demos and he said that we can record it at this place. I didn't have like a very clear vision of where this thing is supposed to go at that time. But I knew that I wanted to do something more, um, um, something dark, but not necessarily, you know, like gothic post-punk thing. More kind of, uh, at that time I saw it more going in the direction of Chelsea Wolf, for example, something like that. Um, but then when uh, when it already started taking shape as a band, uh, also the priorities and the uh, sort of the vision changed a bit and I could really see it as being an um, active live playing band and what was for me especially delightful that I realized that we could really go for experimenting with stuff and really uh, allow ourselves not to... Um, not to limit ourselves on something very, very specific, you know, we play only punk or we play only psychedelic rock. We could just do whatever felt right uh, for a specific song. So that actually the direction I would like very much to keep uh, also further on with this band. Right, for that experimental side of the band, does that always have to keep you working hard because it does sound like you guys like to try so many different things so I guess what's that songwriting process like for you and and do you always have to try and keep one step ahead of what's happening um actually it came pretty natural I mean uh there was mm, from my side like I think from all our sides it was not something like like had to 
be forced. Uh, let's you know, let's shove as much uh, plus, uh, as much possible, as many possible thing uh, inside as we can uh, can get. Um, and it's usually we usually start with a, a certain idea that I bring. It's mostly like a skeleton, and we work uh, as a band uh, and expand it. Change, change places of the of the parts in the song. Change structures. Uh, yeah, Rafa, maybe you can. You wanna say a few words about it? I was also going to say. I mean, I had the same thought that it's pretty natural for us. Yeah. We don't go for something like oh, we have to do a song like this. No, the song comes and then we work on it together as a band, always in the rehearsal space, playing it live, playing it together. But then we also use the studio as a tool to improve the songs. And we can, we, we like to experiment with synthesizers, we like to experiment with uh, vocal effects, or we like to experiment with uh, drum machines. So once we have kind of a, a vision of the song while playing it together, only with guitars, bass, vocals and drums, we then can try to produce it in the studio, like recording, while recording, or after we play it for a while, we think, hey, maybe maybe a synthesizer here, some ambience here could be cool. So it's we don't have an idea of where the song is going to go, unless, for example, Boris has it very clear, like uh, as above, so below, he composed the song with the piano, so with the keys, and then on top of that, we started to add layers and layers. Um, that was a special case, same with the Ghost, where he composed a song with the sitar. So that's, that's a way, that's how I think, how we do things is like, depending on the moment, depending on the instrument, depending on the inspiration. So but, but it's good. I like that we don't have a way to do it. Yeah. It's very open. Uh, Boris, I think this leads to a, a question that's going to sound like a bit of a weird question, but I, I'm kind of curious to know the answer. With so many different instruments that you guys use, how do you know which is the right instrument to use at the right time on a track? No trial and error. Like uh, we we tried, like we, we we had to scrap many ideas. Like many stuff didn't work, and uh, we just try something out and uh, see if it uh, feels correct or not. It's uh, very much like this. I I wouldn't imagine any other way to do it. Yeah. For some stuff, I I knew that I wanted to have certain things in certain places. For example, in the ending of uh, Secrets. I knew I wanted to have flute there. That was for me like I just hear flute on this part, and uh, but mostly we just try, you know, placing things uh, and uh, hearing if it works or not. With the sitar, it was kind of similar as well. Yeah. And Boris, what in yeah, spot? What I, in, sorry, go ahead, Rafa. I just wanted to say that I. Uh, we don't do so much trial and error. Like we kind of like would we oh, yeah, let's try this and we try it and then usually we are okay that's cool you know I, of course it's trial error that's the formula we can say but we are usually sticking to what very early to what we think is the the way to go yeah boris what inspires you to write music is it what's happening in your life at that time is it what's going on in the world at that time what what inspires you to write music yeah, both actually yeah uh, i don't think one can really separate one from another what happens in the world affects what happens in one's life what happens in one's life affects the way you also see the world obviously um yes um, um i think it's just more a sense of uh, you know, a sense of joy that it brings me that kind of makes me continuing doing it. And um, mm, I think it would be wrong to say, you know, like, uh, mm, what happens in the world, that's what inspires me. Yes, of course, it has an impact and it leaves a mark on what uh, I'm writing or what we are playing. Yeah. And, 
but it's because you know you can't really separate yourself from your surrounding i wouldn't say that it's the primary driving force uh, um it's difficult to answer this question to be honest it's just you know you just can't not do it yeah yeah that's kind of what gives you sense <laughs> I'm a writer, so I totally get that. Like, people say to me all the time, oh, what inspired this? And it's like, well, I just felt the need to to write that day or I had an idea for a character and I, I wanted to put it down on paper exactly. that day. So I get it completely. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, absolutely right. And yeah, I think it's sort of like... A, um, there is a connection in this... Uh, <laughs> Kind of be, uh, between the uh, what's inside and what's outside when it goes to this process, so uh, it's kind of trying to make sense of what's going around you and also what's going inside inside of you at, the, at this moment. The way you communicate with the world and the way you try to process and, and to understand it. So obviously the external factors have a big impact, but. Uh, but maybe they're not the primary kind of driving force. Yeah. Yeah. They need to do it, I guess. Yeah. Rafa, the last couple of years have been pretty interesting for you guys. You had the EP came out. That did really well. The two singles came out last year, and people seem to fall in love with them as well, and, and now the album. What has it been like being in the band over the last couple of years, especially with so much music coming out of you guys? Can you repeat the question? I didn't understand the question. Ah, oh, sorry. What's it been like being in the band over the last few years with the EP coming out and being successful, the two singles coming out and doing so well, and now the album? What's it been like? How's it felt for you having so much music coming out and being received so well by by fans and, and music lovers right around the world? Well, that's always a satisfaction. Um, it's something that we do since, I think, Boris as well, since we are teenagers. So it's something that you always have in mind. When I when I started to play in a band and I went to the studio for the first time, I thought, wow, I, I love this. I like to play live, but what I like the most is while we are composing, creating a song together, and I already think on how am I am I going to record it in the studio. So it's really it's always fun to go to studio and then putting your music out and letting the people enjoy it, enjoy your creation. Because for us, it's a very long process. It's uh, trying and changing and trying again and changing again, but in the end, you find something that satisfies you. That's absolutely very satisfying, and I think it's the goal. It's the goal for you as a composer, writer, is to enjoy it, enjoy the process, and enjoy the result. And But most important is that the people who's going to consume your music enjoys it as well. So it's it's really nice. It's been a... It's been a real nice time in this band since 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 it really since it started. Definitely. Now, Boris. Also, sorry, yeah. go ahead. I think it's uh, what I also really cherish about it is the um, is the learning process. Uh, there is I can feel sort of evolving uh, over time. For example, Rafa got into producing and recording just a few years ago, mostly like uh, shortly before before Corona. Our first EP, the, the one was, the one that was released still under the name Janice, uh, it was produced by a friend of ours and slowly kind of we took it into our own hands, mostly Rafa. Um, the production uh, process and that's that's very for me, it's very exciting and very, uh, very interesting to 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 see and experience how how slowly knowledge is being gained, and how the the language also expands, how we can get more ideas across. That's uh, something that really is very satisfactory for me. Definitely, Boris. Talking about exciting things, what are the plans now for the rest of this year for the band? Right. We 
are working now uh, a music video for the song uh, As Above, So Below. Um, then uh, we plan mostly to play live. We want to focus on playing live this year. Last year was uh, focused on the album. We played just a handful of shows, not much, I think less than 10 or around 10. Um, and this year we plan to concentrate on live playing actually. While we also uh, already gathering materials for the for the next release actually. So it's a process that uh, never really stops. Sometimes more a bit latent, but uh, sometimes going more full force. Um, but uh, this uh, the songwriting always continues. But playing live would be the the focus of this year, I believe. Awesome. Well, we are going to play a place. We are going to play right now a place for everyone on our show. What would you like to say to everybody out there, not only before they listen to this track, but also before they go out and listen to the album? Hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, um, I think um, this album, at least the way we saw it, I think it's more enjoyable if you try to take the time and listen to the whole thing. Um, I think it works better as a complete uh, picture um, because I personally also really enjoy like the old uh, progressive rock records uh, where you really had to kind of listen to the whole thing to add up yeah. to get the full picture. Uh, so that was a little bit the idea uh, at the back of our heads when we were working on this album. So I think uh, if the listeners could take the time and uh, take the whole album in, I think that will make uh, 